Today I'm reconnecting and testing the cooling system in the 2013 Tesla Model S battery pack. Up here you can see this is the front of the battery pack, modules 8 and 9. I'm showing this because there's just more room up here. On all the other modules it's a pretty tight quarters between the battery module and the coolant lines. In theory, this is pretty easy. Just make sure that the tab is open, slide the hose onto the tube on the battery module, slide it on all the way, and close the tab. That's it. Now, one thing to keep in mind is you do need to make sure it's all the way on. Otherwise, you could snap that tab shut, not have it be past that uh, flange on the tube, and you're not actually connected. It can come right off. So that's one thing to be careful of. After this, I put in all the cell modules except one and connected their coolant lines. Now, before I install that last module, uh, what I'd like to do is test the cooling lines. Uh, the reason why is I've got these two battery coolant lines right here, but all the rest of them are connected. So these two are kind of the, the beginning and the end of the entire system right now. Uh, these are essentially just 5 16 uh, quick connect fuel lines, so that's standard parts. So I just got some little plastic connectors here that match, and then what I can do is just slide it all the way in there, click that shut, and now I've got a connector. So what I'll do is, this is open right now, but I'll plug it. And then on the other end, I want to be able to just put some air in there. So what I did was I built a little adapter. This looks a little wild, but it's mostly because I was just using the parts that I had. Uh, basically, on the one end, it's just a Schrader valve, which is the sort of thing we're used to seeing for putting air into bicycle tires, except it's got a nice threaded end on here. And then... That's going through a bit of hose to get to the right size. A little bit of clear tube, which is nice because uh, if any coolant gets in here, I can see it. And then at the end, that's that same, just a little plastic um, uh, adapter. So we can put this in here. Just push it all the way in. Close that. Make sure it's good. So now I've got the two ends. Uh, but first, I'm just... Um, I don't know. I'm trying to decide if I want to plug that or not. I guess... Yeah, I'm going to make that into a plug. So I'll pull it out. And let's plug that end. So this is pretty easy. This part here is just plastic. So the barbed end, I'm going to seal off by using flame and a pliers. So now that end is completely sealed off. Okay, that end is plugged, and then the other end I can pressurize, but I'm only going to do that to, uh, I don't know, maybe 10 PSI at the most, something like that. And that'll be just using a little, little battery-operated air pump here. And that barely ran. Make sure I'm not kinking that part. Yeah, so I'm just putting a little air in here. And I don't hear any hissing anywhere. Um, I didn't hear anything else anywhere pop off. And if I wanted to get really fancy, what I could do is uh, put a little air in, check the pressure, close this valve, and come back later. 
Um, I'm not really looking for any slow leaks though. Um, I'm just really looking for if I accidentally missed a connection or if I had put one on but it was accidentally not locked in place. That's really the big thing I'm looking for. Now I probably could just pop out this plug. Uh, there'd be that little bit of air pressure. I'd go and everything's fine. Uh, however, I don't know how much coolant is left in the bottom of the hoses and in the battery modules. And let's say I accidentally put in more air pressure than I had originally intended. If I just popped this out, all that air pressure might start pushing coolant out. So I've got a bucket down here. And I thought the other thing, hmm, maybe I don't just pop that out. <laughs> maybe instead I uh, relieve pressure on this and uh, if any coolant starts coming out, we'll be able to see it right here. So I just want to make sure that valve is open. I've got a, a bicycle tool here, or you could use just the tip of a pen or something like that. But um, I'm just going to press in here, slowly letting the air pressure back out. And sure enough, there, there wasn't enough air pressure in there to, uh, you know, push back out any coolant. So we should be good there. Now, I got to admit, the first time I did this was without the camera running, and at that time, I did get some coolant coming out. So just make sure your hoses are outside the battery pack and probably over a bucket. And just pop our plug back out. And now our... We know the coolant system is sealed, everything's working right, and that last battery module can go in here. Now, it was not always easy to connect the coolant lines. Uh, typically, what I did on most of these was I got the module into place, but held up the outside edge with a rubber door stop, just enough so that I could get the coolant lines connected. But uh, those lines are pretty short, so sometimes even then uh, I might have to get like the one coolant line connected, uh, put the battery module down the rest of the way, and then connect the second one. It just sort of depended a bit. But, uh, you know, take your time and make sure you get them connected properly. After that, it's just plugging in the BMS connector and torquing down the two battery terminal bolts. Then come the orange terminal insulators, which I could not find right that second, but I did put them in and then it's covered with a mica sheet. After all that, it's time to reinstall the cover, which we'll show in the next video. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. Please like and share with your friends. And until next time, stay charged up.